everyone has rights. In a country like Australia, it's something that we take for granted. And I'm sure you'll agree that we all want what's best for others as well. But what happens to those rights when faced with the daily challenges of running a disability service? As board members of disability services, we may feel we are on top of the human rights issues because the organisations we support have an obligation to better the lives of people with disability. But I am asking you today how deep that commitment and understanding is, not just at a board level, but throughout the organisation. How intrinsic is a rights-based approach to everything we do? Over the years, I have had numerous experiences of having my human rights both respected and disrespected. For me, human rights means to be treated with equality, to be treated with dignity, and it should not make a difference whether I'm in a chair or not. Human rights means to me to be treated as an equal and making sure that I'm treated the same as everybody else. Human rights are what we expect for every person living in a democratic society. So many words come, come to mind, words like freedom, security, right to education, right to employment, basically inclusion. So human rights um, to me means empowerment. It means being able to have choice and control over what happens in your life as a person with a disability. I think it also means equality. There's limited services available. So I think once people get into sometimes the services that they are, they conform. So rather than, you know, maybe speaking out that something might be quite right or um, challenging or raising a complaint, sometimes they, they're too scared to because of the repercussions that might come their way. I felt my human rights weren't being respected when I was at the day service when I had to put my hand up to go to the bathroom. You tell me a workplace now that you have to put your hand up to go to the bathroom. You can feel like your human rights aren't being respected you know, from service providers in very subtle ways, coming into the office of a service provider and not knowing where reception is because it's not been clearly marked, or coming into a service provider and having the reception staff maybe not be aware of it um, when they're dealing with somebody who has a hearing impairment. They need to speak up and they need to not move their head around and do all sorts of things that can make it more difficult for you. The basic rights that we all have, I guess, as individuals and as people, um, that we should expect. I don't think a human rights approach starts from any distinct point. I see that it is actually the way that community, not-for-profit, service-driven organisations actually work and what we're really talking about is the degree to which we focus on it. I would say that over um, the 14 years of history for Pinnock, there has always been a strong degree of concern about listening to clients, involving them. It now is becoming much more part of our everyday language. The human rights based approach on me personally means that I can communicate with all of the people that work within the organisation at the same level that we're, we're talking about the same journey. I think what works well and what doesn't work well in a human rights based approach is um, really down to attitude and to drive. Um, so you can have the best possible client representative system or you can have a self-advocacy group, you can have monitoring systems, but if that's not driven from the top, then it's you know not going to produce the same sort of outcomes as it would if you have a board and a CEO that's really driving that and that is passionate about making the environment human rights friendly. We've changed, I guess, at a board level um, to support a human rights based approach, particularly with the vision and mission statement. So I guess firstly, it's really important that you lead from the top down um, on what you know you want that human rights approach to be. So then it can be cascaded and, and filled throughout. The role of the board is 
around setting the direction. So it is through um, embedding it in the strategic documents, so the strategic plan, um, setting the values and the vision and mission. They have an important role in recruiting a CEO who holds those values and is going to create a culture with a senior management team to create that culture across the organisation. Our board changed from monthly board meetings to bi-monthly board meetings and bi-monthly workshops. And in the workshops, we, we get feedback from our, from our employees and from the people that we care about. We listen to the people, making sure that human rights is implicit in everything we do. Um, the board genuinely cares, and because it genuinely cares, we want to know what's going on. We want to be, we want to communicate. We want to know what mistakes we make. We want to learn from our mistakes. There would not be a decision that we make that we do not go back to our vision and mission. And if a decision has been made that perhaps puts a staff process need in front of a client need, we will always pick that up and ask the question about, yes, that's all very well, but how does this actually impact on the client and what needs to happen for this to be the primary reason for making that decision? The person-centred approach that we already were embracing is a natural progression into, in, into human rights. Participation of people with disabilities and, and, and the ageing people that we care about is vital. There are major communication problems, as you know, with some people with, with, with disabilities. But if we can't communicate directly with them, we can communicate with family members. If it's, if it's uh, an acquired disability, we can find out what the life was prior to the disability, what they enjoyed doing, what their aspirations were. If it's a disability from birth, we can find out what the families did together, where they were happiest. Carers change, employees change, but the constant are the people that we care about, so we must keep records. I think service providers should tell people with a disability what their human rights are, and it is okay if they don't get their human rights heard to complain. Sometimes it's the right decision for a person not to have um, all their funding with us, for example. It might be right for them where they actually um, only come to us on a part-time basis and we do activities with them because they might need different stimulation, different um, people around them to develop maybe different social skills or what that might be. We have somebody um, that's um, been coming to us for about 14, 15 years um, and only in the last couple of years um, his mum actually has you know, decided that you know, on this individual based approach that it's actually the right thing to do to spread out a little bit and we've really supported that. If we do our job really well and people meet their outcomes then you know, it's like in a business environment, you, know, you get referral of business, you're doing the right thing for the personal development of the people but from a business approach um, hopefully new leads come in the door and we have the opportunity to help more people. The people who use our service and their families and carers, I don't know that they would necessarily articulate it as a human-based approach. They certainly do talk to us about uh, the difference it makes in their lives to be respected and heard and um, again at the centre of what's happening. If you're going to adopt a human rights approach, two key things are to um, ensure that you look at and understand the way the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities might work with that approach um, and, and bring it back from being a really abstract kind of thing that, that's very high level to what happens to the day to day in your organisation. And the second thing I would say is to involve people with disability at every level. So make sure that you're talking to people with disability who are clients, that you're um, engaging people with disability to be staff or contractors or in, in, in senior management roles, and that you're engaging people with disability um, to be 
as part of your governance structures as well. My advice to organisations is to give people with a disability the human rights like everyone else in the community gets. People with a disability are an equal as everybody else. Look at their ability before you look at their disability. It's about accepting that it takes a long time to change. So I have maybe felt that I'm very clear about my expectations. I behave in a way that I think models this and demonstrates this is my expectation. And maybe I assume at times that it's all there and sorted, but actually I don't know that it ever is. I think it's something that I always will need to go back and constantly have conversations about. And I think um, it's important to remember that we are in this sector because we deeply care about the people we're working with and everybody is definitely trying to do the right thing. We're moving into an era where um, disability service providers of all different shapes and sizes are going to have to really acknowledge and respond to the fact that people with disability are getting the control and have choice. Um, and so I think from that perspective it's, it's particularly good to do as well. Um, I also think it's something that government is starting to look more at um, in terms of, you know, prioritising how, how they see supports for people with disability um, and, and they're moving towards a model where they want to see more control and choice given to people with disability and if service providers don't respond to that, they not only lose us as, as people with disability, as their clients, but they, they perhaps lose the eye of government. To be successful in, in the changes, you need to differentiate yourself in, in your service proposition and those organisations that are taking a human rights approach, putting customers and or clients and their staff at the centre of what they do, will reap the rewards off the bottom line because people are more engaged, the outcomes are good, generates more business and you'll get financial results in the bottom line. Yes, we'll make mistakes but we hear, we hear from, from the organisation, we learn from them, and we're moving forward. And we have a pride as board, as board members in that journey. Personally, I believe that the human rights-based approach is a no-brainer. If you genuinely care about people, you've got to do it.